Hey there, my name is Jason. I'm a registered sleep technician and I wanted to give you a brief tour of what it's like to come to a sleep lab. This is just an overview to help you get ready for uh, what you might come across. Number one thing, when your doctor refers you, make sure that you go to an accredited sleep facility that's been accredited by the American, American Academy of Sleep Medicine. Brain fart when you're on camera. Um, these people, anyone who's accredited, has gone through a rigorous uh, vetting process. They've been visited. Um, everything's in order. They know how to do all the tests properly. They have proper staff. They have uh, proper medical uh, dictation physicians, uh, sleep specialists. So you're going to be really getting the best care that you can. So look for, I'm going to cut off the top because I, so make sure that they're accredited. I don't want you to see where I work because, uh, you know, creepy folk out there. So you come into the lobby, you're going to meet your technician. Your technician is going to say, hey, nice to meet you. You know, you're here for a sleep study, no problem. You're just going to have a ton of wires on you. It's going to be, you know, you're going to get used to them pretty quickly. Um, all I need you to do tonight is sleep, and that is it. So you're going to come in. They're going to show you one of their bedrooms. Typical bedroom. Pretty much looks just like a hospital room, except you'll see that there's some uh, extra equipment down here, amplifiers and such, CPAP machines. Other than that, you just have a bed, and uh, hopefully it doesn't seem too sterile and hospital-like. They're going to, at this point, ask you to change into your pajamas. You know, did you have any caffeine, chocolate today? Oh, that's good. Did you have any, uh, did you take a nap at all? Oh, that's good. You don't want to take a nap because you want to come here good and tired. Um, even though you have all these wires and things on you, you're still going to sleep like you would typically at home. Uh, most people are afraid that, you know, I'm not going to sleep. This isn't representing my sleep entirely. Well, once you fall asleep, you're, you don't know where you're at. You're going to do what you do typically at home. Uh, so don't worry about that. It's not really a concern. So your technician is going to come in and they're going <clears> to <throat> get you hooked up. So this is a typical hookup facility, or sorry, hookup room. You're going to have all these wires, not all these, but you're going to have, uh, we're monitoring things like your breathing. So you have three channels or four channels just for that alone. Um, you also are going to be, so you, so you have breathing, you have uh, five, six, seven on your head. Uh, you're going to have a bunch on your face here, 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 behind your ears, um, EKG patches, belts around your waist. You're going to have some on your legs, um, a, a probe on your finger for oxygen saturation. You're going to have nasal cannula for uh, your breathing status uh, prior to being put on CPAP. Uh, anyway, after that, you're going to be taken back to your room. Um, they're going to ask you, um, they're going to sit you down, probably fit you for a mass, since most studies are split nights. <clears throat> what a split night means is that you start off without CPAP, just the cannula in your nose that's measuring your breathing. Um, and then at that point, uh, after that, once you have a diagnosis, or even if they're snoring, since snoring is a sign of an obstruction, uh, they're going to put you on CPAP and then see how uh, the baseline portion without CPAP and the CPAP portion differ and if it's an improvement for you. Um, if you have sleep apnea of any degree, it's an improvement almost almost always. Um, so at this point when, when the technician is having you, um, having you try out CPAP, this is a time where you want to try to get them to fit you with a mask that's comfortable and it's going to work for you for the long term. Uh, a lot of times the, the technicians will they just try to get you on a mask to use to get through the night. Um, fitting you with a mask isn't their main concern. There's a lot of masks out there. I would say start with something, a uh, good quality mask, like a ResMed Vista, which is just a nasal mask, covers just your nose. If you're really claustrophobic, you might want to go with a nasal pillow. Uh, there's a ResSpironix OptiLife um, and a ResMed Swift LT, which are both nasal pillows, which are really good masks. If you need to use a full face mask uh, that covers up your nose and your mouth, I would use a ResMed Quattro. Uh, that's probably the best mask for that. Um, why would you need to use a full face mask? It's if you are a mouth breather. So um, not everyone's a mouth breather just because I know you wake up at home with uh, a dry mouth. Usually when people have sleep apnea, if you think about yourself swimming in a, in a swimming pool and you go underwater, hold your breath for a long time, when you come up, the first thing you do is <gasps> like that. You're not going <laughs> to do that. You can't get as much air in. 
So you do that overnight. Um, I just did it once and now my throat is dry. You're gonna wake up feeling like you are a mouth breather. Uh, what we find in the sleep lab is that once you put people on CPAP, they, they breathe through their nose when they're at an appropriate pressure. Uh, but some people do have chronic nasal congestion, deviated septums, um, you know, any, any number of problems that might cause it. Uh, it's nice to have a full face mask on backup if you get put on at home. If you get a cold or, you know, uh, flu or just uh, typical sinus problems during allergy season. So it's nice to have one on backup. But most people prefer to go with a nasal only mask. Uh, anyway, that's pretty much it. Um, once you're done with all of that, hey, follow me. Once you're done with that, um, that you know they're going to take all the wires off in the morning, and then uh, at that point they're going to be a daytime scoring technician like myself, who is going to uh, go over the study with you. So we do that. Uh, you can see this this right here. Uh, this is a sleep study, and what you do is you go through and you score it. What scoring means is that you're just going to mark all the events. Uh, that you see during the night, generate a port, report for the doctor, and then the doctor will dictate based on those numbers that, uh, that you found. Anyway, I hope that helped. hope you feel maybe less stressed about it. It's really not a big deal. It's the only test you actually get to sleep through, and that's how you pass. So i uh, got to get back to work, and uh, thank you very much. I hope that helps you out a little bit.